Candace Owens became Catholic. Wow. Welcome back to episode 99 of the What's It All podcast. I'm your host, Pete Dill. We got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about Candace Owens becoming Catholic and what she said in her Twitter post about home and faith and why that's so important to me. But first, we're going to get into a very funny, awkward interaction I had at the park with my son the other day. I realized as a young dad, going to the park with my son, there's like a jungle, there's an ecosystem happening. Kids are running around like crazy. Parents are interacting with each other, like running with their kids, trying to follow their kids, but also running into each other and, you know, trying to maybe also be normal humans. So like, do you, so you, it brings up all these awkward situations. Do you talk? Do you not talk? Do you just you know, put your head down. But, you know, then again, you're standing around like a one-year-old. You're standing two feet from another 35-year-old. And it's like, do we say anything? Do we not say anything? So, you know, me, I tend to just try to, like, talk with the other parents from at the park. I'm that guy. If that annoys you, I'm sorry. I can't just stand within two feet of another human watching two kids play in dirt and just stand there and act really, oh, pretend like I'm over the country. She's like, oh, wow, the, you're... The dirt? Wow, you're digging so much dirt. When, like, there's another guy's face right here, like, I have to kind of, like, make a note. Be like, yeah, this kid's always digging holes. I don't know why he's digging so much holes, but, you know, it's what he's doing. I think it's a hole digging phase. But, you know, we're, do- we're, we're we enjoy watching dig holes. So, I have to kind of, like, you know, I like to talk. But, you know, I'm not going to start trading cell phone numbers with the people. But, you know, just say, this is what he likes to do. You know, some parents are into it. Some parents aren't into it. You know, I give a kid a high five the other day. And the mom was like, wow, this is the first high five he's ever given. So that was a pretty big deal. You know, I'm walking by him again. I was like, hey, that kid's got a good high five right there. And the mom's laughing. The kid's laughing. They walk by us again. I'm like, hey, you know, I got, I got one more high five. You mean if you want. You know, the mom's laughing. And the kid's laughing. I was like, all right, now we can't go around this family again. Because I have no more jokes to make about the high five. So we got to go. All right, get in the car. We got to go. I see them coming towards us. Go to the car. Run to the car. Um, so I had this funny interaction where... <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing, but it's so funny to me. Like, my, you know, there's so many people at some of these parks over the United States. There's so many people. And there's this guy next to me. And, the two, and you know, Diego and... His son are kind of run around, you know, and there's, there's no, there's no sort of logic to these kids play. They run, they jump, they throw something, they grab a wood chip, they throw it, they spin a tic-tac-toe thing, they run up and down, they go up, they go up a stair, they go down a stair, they go up a stair, they go down a stair, they sit down in the stair, they run, you know, and they're all doing it around each other, just spinning around each other, doing different play, and it's like, it makes no sense. So, you know, Diego's kind of playing, and then other kids coming and coming up to him. And Diego's going up and down on this step, and he's jumping, and I was like, yeah, you know, he loves to jump so much, and he's always kind of running and jumping and going up and down. It's really fun to watch. Um, you know, I, he's one and a half, or he's almost, he's, you know, 20 months, so, you, you know, I just really enjoy watching him, you know, from crawling to walking to jumping. Now he's going up and down stairs. It's just, it's been cool to see him do that. And this dad, kind of young dad, my age, is just kind of like, oh, it's good. And... He's good. He's good. And had this like Russia accent. And I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> this guy didn't understand a word I just said. I just went right into this super lame up, down, jumping exercise of my son. And this dad was probably like, the mannequins talk too much about their kids. My son dig a hole. We go home. That's it. I don't tell anyone about it. <laughs> and the dad. This Russian dad just kind of like walks away. He's like, all right, well, we'll see you guys around. I'm happy to give your kid a high five if he's into that. I've been doing it earlier today. Kids have been loving it. Actually, mom's been loving it. Then dads have been loving it too. So if you, oh, you guys are gone already. All right, well, great, great seeing you guys today. I was just like, I had to laugh to myself because I thought it was one of those interactions of like, oh, two little boys are, you know, doing some silly little play and it's funny and we can like talk about it just to pass the time. 
And this guy was just like, I don't even know what this guy is talking about. And uh, so I, I, I thought it was funny. Um, getting into the meat of the episode, I want to talk about some exciting news, but also what that means. Candace Owens became Catholic. Wow, that's pretty cool. Candace Owens, the media star, the um, you know, political pundit, the kind of firecracker of you know the political world, she became Catholic. And she's married to a very, very devout Catholic um, guy himself and has been on this journey of becoming Catholic, and she posted about it on Twitter. Now, I think it's really cool that she became Catholic, but I want to kind of talk about her message and my takeaways from what she posted. So this was her Twitter message. I'm going to read it right here. This was her Twitter message about becoming Catholic. She said, Recently I made the decision to go home. There is, of course, so much more that I want that went into this decision and I plan to share in the future. But for now, praise be to God for his gentle but relentless guiding of my heart toward truth. She then gives a, a quote from Isaiah. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then she just says, as like a sign off, I do not fear Christ is king. Two things struck me. This idea of home this idea of fear. I want to get into both of them. These are my two takeaways that really struck me about her conversion story. She said, I came home. And the idea of church, the church, Christ being home, I think is so powerful. Because I don't I don't know if I don't I don't know if we I don't know if I look at you know the church. As like home. I think sometimes it's easy to look at the church, going to church, our relationship with God, as duty. As a duty. And we all know that duty sometimes is like, duty and home are two different feelings. You know, duty and home have two very, very different feelings. Duty is noble. It's worthy. It's keep your chin up. It's stay the path. We have a duty and so we are going to do it. We're going to be obedient to this. Home? Home is easy. Home is light. Home is relaxing. And Candace Owens says, I came home and talked about her deeper conversion towards in the Catholic Church. Do we look at the church? Do we look at the Catholic Church as home? Or do we look at it as duty? I know for myself, I've looked at church, you know, church, the church. Relationship God has duty a lot of times. I have to do this. I have to go to church on Sundays. I should pray. I shouldn't sin. These kind of like obligations. I know for myself I can look at the church as obligations. And there's a lot of good and grace in it. But I have a duty to do these things. I have a duty to act moral. I have a duty to go to church. I have a duty to follow God. But this idea struck me of home, struck me so deeply when she said it. And I've actually had a couple of good conversations recently about like church being home, the church being all of our homes, God being our home. Think about being away from home physically. You're out of your house. You're in a different country. You're 17 days away from your house. You're in Europe. You're waiting in lines. Your clothes are dirty. You're not wearing any, any underwear. You are sweating. You're going through customs. You fly in a plane that is too tight. You're, you, you know, the, the plane, the roads are too tight. The food is terrible. You're so tired. You're bad. Your phone is dead. You land to the airport. The taxis aren't there. Your friend can't pick you up. And all you're thinking is, I just want to go home. I just want to be home. And then you get home. You crack open the door and you just see everything in your home just sitting there still. And you're just like, ah, home. And you can collapse on your bed. And you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. I know I was just in Barcelona, but this bed right here in my home is the greatest place in the history, history of the world. I'd be no, I'd rather be no other place than my bed right now. You know, after a long, after a long vacation, after a long trip. Do we look at the church like that? 
or do we look at the church like a duty? I think it's a I think I think it's a really great time to really look at the church as a home. And why also? Because as we need to look at the church as home because we need to bring people into it. And what better place to evangelize to people than your home? You know, you don't you you don't you don't uh when you invite someone over your house in your home, you kind of are like, this is it. This is my couch. These are my pillows. This is our smell. This is our house smell. This is the stove we use. This is our toaster. This is our coffee maker. This is our home. This is where we live. This is where we find restoration. This is where we reach fuel, recharge. We want to welcome you into it and have dinner together, break bread and share life together. That's like a powerful, you know, it's a powerful moment. That's a powerful experience when you bring someone into your home and you share life with them. That like builds relationship a lot. When you invite someone over your house for dinner, that's like, dude, you're like, all right, we're, we're getting something. You might, you might be my funeral, bro. If you're coming over to my house for dinner. And I think our, we need to start looking at our church more like a home because we need to be able to bring people into it. We need to bring people into the church more and more and we need to bring them home. We need to bring them into our home. So that struck me. I thought that was really beautiful, the way that she said that. You know, I came home. I was like, that's perfect. Okay, now I want to talk about her last line, which struck me again very, very much. She put, I do not fear Christ is king. And she gave that passage from um, the book of Isaiah. I love that she wrote that Bible verse because that Bible verse actually spoke to me very recently which I'll talk about in a minute. But for so long in my life, I've let fear play too big of a part in my walk with Christ. I'm always held very tightly onto where God is bringing me. I wanted answers immediately, right now, to where God is bringing me. I need to see the proof in the pudding right now. And it wasn't until I'd say the past couple of years that I've really seen a lot of fear that I've had in my walk with Christ. Fearful of where we lead me, fearful of what it means, fearful of what people think of me, fearful of um, what I'm going to have to give up, fearful of the person I'll become, fearful of letting go of the old me, even if the old me isn't where I want to be anymore. So I thought it was so powerful when Candace put, I fear not Christ is king. Like, dang, that's all right. Kind of like, come what may, whatever is ahead of me on the road, I fear not. And I was like, more power to you, Candace, because that's a awesome perspective. And I'm really trying to learn that perspective more and more. Because for me, I don't want people to think I have fear. You know, I'm a guy. I'm a physically big guy. They always say, you know, like, the bigger guy you are, the more, more people think you just should. You're, you're, you're tall. You, you don't have any fears, right? It's like, actually, I do have fears. Um, you know, I don't want people to think I'm scared of things. I don't want to even admit to myself that I'm scared of things. It can be really, really, really hard to even admit that I have fear of things in life and fear of the unknown, fear of where God is bringing me. But fear is the exact opposite of faith. And fear is a fear is a tactic of the evil one to keep us from trusting God. Fear that it's going to be bad if we follow God. Fear that God actually doesn't have the right answers. Fear that God is leading us to bad places. So we trust in ourselves, we follow ourselves, and, you know, we fall on our faces because, you know, we can only get so far. And we get back up and we still trust ourselves. We're asking, wondering where God is. And we let fear take hold instead of faith. So I've, ha- I've tried to have this renewal of, like, expected faith in my life, you know, of like, hey, I have faith that I don't have all the answers and God is bringing me to good places. I have faith, expected faith, that God knows more than I do of what's good for me. Huh, what? The impossible. I know what's best for me always. I'm trying to have faith 
that God is pushing me to places that I need to be. And fear that it's it's and when when but when we live in fear we can't we can't walk in faith when we live in fear we can't walk in faith and we live in a culture of fear that is for sure man we live in a culture of fear everyone is walking around afraid of everything of what everyone thinks of what's going to happen of war in the world of political divisions of who's going to get voted in of how this is going to happen of the world crumbling democracy democracy crumbling Inflation is too high. Everyone's walking around in fear of everything. And then we're supposed to have faith that God is actually in control of all this. And that can be really hard. It can be hard to let faith play a bigger part than fear. So why, though, is this Bible verse so powerful? Okay, so... Candace Owens quotes a little bit of the book of Isaiah, but it's like a three, she, there's a couple passages right after that are super powerful to me. And they, it's so funny that she quoted this because I actually just had this really awesome experience with it, this Bible verse. And it's for the book of Isaiah chapter 41. Now, I saw a video recently on TikTok. Now, for those of you that aren't on TikTok, you know, it's hard to explain what this video is, but it was just like a video with voiceover of this wonderful, soothing voice. And it's reading Bible passages with like really beautiful images and beautiful music over it. And the reading the Bible verse is not like reading it. It's like reading it like poetry. And one recently was reading from this book of Isaiah 41. And I saw this video. It was late at night one night. Probably should have been in bed. Was scrolling TikTok, and I saw this video, and I started to cry. And I, <laughs> I got got the video was pulling at the heartstrings, and I cried. I got got it got me. I watched it. I was just like, oh, oh gosh, wait, it totally got me. Thought he was asleep right next to me. I'm like watching. I look, the tears start shooting. A tear starts shooting on my face. I was just like, oh. It got me. <laughs> oh, it got me. And I'm not like a huge crier, but I think ever since I had kids also, it's kind of like opened me up to a little bit of just like allowing myself to be a little more emotional, feel things a little more deeply. But um, so it's actually a lot for me to admit that I actually cried and I'm trying to take a leap of expected faith to not think that people are going to call me um, lame for crying. You know what I mean? School, schoolyard rules. So I, 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 I watched this video and I cried watching it a little bit because it was so powerful and so beautiful. And it's the word of God, which I think why it was also so powerful. And I'll explain my perspective of why I thought it was so beautiful. The words that I'm going to read, I want you to listen to them like it's God talking directly to you, but that it's a promise. Not just words that Isaiah was speaking 4,000 years ago, but a promise from God to you. A promise from God to you, a God that understands every single challenge and hard thing that you're going through right now. The book of Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. So, imagine God, God understands everything you're going through right now. And God is saying, I'm going to take you, take hold of your right hand. Do not fear. I will help you. So that, that's why it's like I spent so many years of my life being afraid of where God's bringing me because I don't know if I've ever really trusted that God knows what's best for me. But right here, this is a promise from God saying, do not fear. I will help you. I'm going to take you by your right hand. 
you know? And it's like, dang, again, fu- I think kind of funny to me to be like, man, just, you know, 12, 12.03 at night in the middle, you know, in, at midnight, see this video and just be like, oh gosh, this is powerful. This is powerful. Um, but that's a powerful, powerful, powerful verse. And I think as Catholics, we need to take a renewed step in expectant faith and really try to fight against fear because this is the words of God saying, do not fear. I will help you. This is what God's saying to us, but too often we trust the voices of the world and the voices of the economy and the voices of politics and the avoid the voices of, you know, the culture to define what we think of ourselves and define what we think of our life. They say democracy is crumbling. We're like, oh, shoot. Do you guys hear democracy is crumbling? That's what they're saying on TV. But our God says, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Okay. Well, let's walk in faith and not fear and trust that God is going to help us through all of our hard times, through all of our challenges. Even to when we don't know where we're going to be led to. Even when we don't know where we're going. I think this is such a beautiful verse. And it's like such a powerful, beautiful verse from Isaiah. It's such a great promise from God to us. But it's also really powerful that Candace Owens wrote it in her testimony about becoming Catholic. Um, because it's the right mindset. It's the mindset we all need to have. Which is, I do not fear. Christ is king. Dang, so simple, but so powerful. I do not fear Christ is king. That's kind of the model we need to go for. I do not fear. So really cool to see Candace always becoming Catholic. Um, You know, she'll get a lot of backlash. She'll get a lot of um, people coming at her from every type walk of life. But I actually trust that Candace Owens will be able to defend herself very well. So I'm going to make sure to keep Candace in my prayers. And I hope all of you do too. um, Because it's exciting stuff. And I think it's really cool. I'm excited to see her experience with the Catholic faith, you know, 34 years old, had a lot of ex- exp- my whole life experience, the Catholic faith. And, you know, I excited. I love hearing other people's experiences um, of all walks of life, cradle Catholics, converts. It's just, I love hearing other people's experience. So I'm excited to hear what she thinks, you know, of the sacraments and um, of mass and everything. So that's going to be a lot of fun to hear in the future. Um, but, you know, home, and faith, you know, home and expected faith, our church. So that's something we can all strive for. Something I know I'm working on more and more in my life. So hope you all have a great day, great weekend. Hope you're all having a great Easter season. Please reach out to me, email me, text me. I appreciate you all reaching out to me. I've had more people reach out to me, which is just so incredible um, to hear that this podcast is, you know, being a part of people's lives. I want to thank you all for being a part of my life. And I enjoy being a part of yours for the little time that we have today. So thank you all so much. Appreciate you all. I'll talk to y'all soon. Have a good one. Peace.